Mandibular first premolars. Let's go. There are two mandibular first premolars, the left and the right, and they are numbered 21 and 28 using the universal numbering system. Our mandibular first premolar is the smallest of all the premolars. It's the fourth from the midline, just distal to the mandibular canine. The mandibular first premolar has two cusps and one root. Our mandibular first premolar is going to develop from four lobes, just like the maxillary premolars did. Three buccal, one lingual. A key difference is that the middle buccal developmental lobe is very developed and the lingual lobe is not very developed. This is going to lead to a premolar with a very large prominent buccal cusp and buccal triangular ridge and a very small non-functioning kind of pathetic not well developed lingual cusp that resembles a little bit of a cingulum that you see on the canines. The function of the mandibular first premolar is to chew and grind our food, support the cheeks, maintain the vertical dimension of the face, and the mandibular first premolar is going to erupt at 10 to 12 years old and the root completes about three years later at 12 to 13 years old. The first sign of calcification is at 1.25 to 2 years old, which I just simplified to 1 to 2 years old. Now let's look at the mandibular first premolar from the facial. From the facial, you can see that the outline of the tooth is once again a trapezoid, tapering down from the occlusal to the cervix. Because there is that cusp, it could also be considered a pentagon. The crown of the mandibular first premolar is shorter than the mandibular canine, his neighbor, and the root is also shorter than the mandibular canine. From the facial, you can only see one of the two cusps because that lingual cusp is so small compared to the buccal cusp. The cusp tip of the buccal cusp is going to be mesial to the center of the crown, giving us a mesial cusp slope that is smaller than the distal cusp ridge or cusp slope. On these cusp ridges, there might be notches or indentations. The mesial outline is going to be convex over the contact and then straight or slightly concave to the cervix. The contact is in the middle one third. The distal outline is also going to be convex over the contact and then cervical to the contact is going to be concave. The distal contact is almost even with the mesial contact, but it is more occlusal. This is different than the typical distal contact being more cervical than the mesial contact. For a mandibular first premolar, the mesial contact is actually more cervical. That distal contact is still in the middle one third though. There's gonna be a buccal ridge going from the cusp tip down to the cervix. And once again, this is going to develop from the middle buccal lobe and is very prominent to either side Dividing the parts of the tooth that develop from those three buccal lobes could be depressions. Once again, there is one root. From the lingual, we can see those two cusps and you can see that height different a bit better, difference a bit better. There's a buccal cusp and a lingual cusp, with the lingual being much, much smaller than the buccal cusp, two thirds the size of the buccal cusp, in fact. The position of the cusp tip of the lingual cusp I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> the textbooks are different and there are some variability and I've actually never seen a question on this. Some say it's to the mesial, some say it's centered, some say it could be mesial, distal, or centered. So I would not recommend this being a point that you memorize. On the lingual surface, what they care more about is the groove that's gonna be on the lingual surface. And that groove is called the mesial lingual developmental groove. This groove is going to run between the marg mesial marginal ridge and the mesial cusp slope of the lingual cusp. Another way of saying that is it runs between the parts that were developed from the mesial buccal lobe and the lingual lobe. This is a great anatomical landmark for telling mesial versus distal so you can tell left from right because on the lingual surface, this is going to be on the mesial side. There is a lingual ridge as well, but it's not very obvious or well developed. Now, our mandibular premolars do tilt towards the lingual. So when we're looking at the lingual surface, we can see a lot 
of the buccal cusp and the occlusal anatomy. So sometimes you can see the fossa and the triangular ridge of the buccal cusp. Um, we'll go over those anatomical landmarks when we look at the occlusal though. The crown and root are gonna taper lingually. So the mesial distal dimension of the facial or buccal is going to be wider than the mesial distal dimension of the lingual. Now let's look at those proximal views. This is the mesial, this is the distal. The outline of our mandibular first premolar from the proximal view is a rhomboid tilting towards the lingual. There are two cusps, the buccal cusp and lingual cusp. And once again, you can see that the buccal cusp is much taller than the poorly developed lingual cusp. The crowns are tilting towards that lingual, unlike the maxillary premolars, which were straight on with the roots. The buccal cusp tip is nearly centered over the root, while the lingual cusp tip is approximately in line with the lingual border of the root, sometimes even lingual to the root, showing off that fact that the crown is tilting towards the lingual. The buccal outline is convex with the height of contour in the cervical one third. The lingual outline is also convex with the height of contour in the middle one third. The distal marginal ridge is horizontal, just like the maxillary premolars had horizontal distal marginal ridges. A special trait of the mandibular first premolar is that the mesial marginal ridge is not horizontal. It's going to slope cervically. Some textbooks describe it as right in between horizontal and vertical, so 45 degrees. It is not horizontal. It's not perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. Also, the distal marginal ridge is more occlusal than the mesial marginal ridge on the mandibular first premolar. This is another trait that is unique to this tooth. All the other posterior teeth, the distal marginal ridge is more cervical than the mesial marginal ridge. But for this tooth, the mesial marginal ridge is more cervical. You could also say the distal marginal ridge is more occlusal. This follows along with the contacts as well. Distal, more occlusal than mesial. The CEJ or cervical line is going to curve occlusally on the mesial and the distal. It curves less than the anterior teeth and the mesial is more curved than the distal. Once again, this tooth has one root. There might be root depressions. The mesial can or might not have a root depression and the distal is more likely to have a root depression. From the mesial, you can see that groove we saw from the lingual, the mesial lingual developmental groove, going between the mesial marginal ridge and that lingual cusp or the mesial lingual cusp ridge. Now let's look at this tooth from the occlusal. The outline of the mandibular first premolar from the occlusal is diamond shaped and compared to the maxillary premolars, it's not, it, it's more circular. It's closer in with mesial distally as it is facial lingually, unlike the maxillary premolars where it was obviously longer facial lingually than mesial distally, giving it more of an oval shape. Here we're a bit closer to circular. The crown is going to taper from the context to the lingual quite significantly since that is such a poorly developed lingual cusp. Speaking of cusps, we have two, the buccal and the lingual. The buccal being much larger than the lingual. The buccal cusp is positioned mesially to the center of the crown and the lingual cusp is going to vary. Some, some might be centered, some might be distal, some might be mesial to the center. The crown is tilting lingually, just like all of our mandibular posterior teeth. With a tilting lingual, we can see a lot of the buccal surface. Now let's look at our ridges. And once again, no panicking allowed. We are actually going to have the same names of our ridges as we did for the maxillary first and the maxillary second premolar. All the names you're gonna see are the same. There are a few aspects that are gonna be a little bit different and I'm gonna highlight that. So starting off, we have a mesial marginal ridge and a distal marginal ridge. You've seen those before with our other premolars and our anterior teeth. The facts to remember is that the mesial marginal ridge is not horizontal. It's not perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. It's going to slope cervically, while the distal marginal ridge is horizontal. For our other 
we're thinking four per pyramid shaped cusp. For the buccal cusp, that would be going towards the mesial, the mesial buccal cusp bridge, going towards the distal, the distal buccal cusp bridge, towards the buccal, the buccal cusp bridge of the buccal cusp, and going towards the lingual, the lingual ridge of the buccal cusp. We have preferred more commonly used names for two of these ridges. Towards the buccal, it's more often just called the buccal ridge, which we saw from the buccal. For that lingual cusp ridge of the buccal cusp, that's our triangular ridge, our buccal triangular ridge, which is very prominent and very well developed because it develops from that middle buccal lobe. Looking at the lingual cusp, it's a pyramid. Four directions, four cusp bridges to know. Towards the mesial, the mesial lingual cusp bridge. Towards the distal, the distal lingual cusp bridge. Towards the lingual, the lingual ridge of the lingual cusp. Towards the buccal, the buccal ridge of the lingual cusp. There are preferred names for that buccal and lingual. For that lingual cusp bridge of the lingual cusp, just the lingual ridge. It's not very well developed, but you might see it on the lingual as well. That buccal cusp bridge of the lingual cusp is the lingual triangular ridge. Nowhere near as developed as that buccal triangular ridge, but he's there and they meet each other. Two triangular ridges, buccal triangular ridge, lingual triangular ridge, meeting each other makes a transverse ridge. For our mandibular first premolar, this transverse ridge is very, very prominent, more prominent than all of our other premolars. It's so prominent that when we look at grooves, you'll see that there very often is not even a central groove between these two triangular ridges because combined, they're such a prominent transverse ridge. So, you know all the names of the ridges, four per cusp and those marginal ridges. Fun facts for our mandibular first premolar is that that mesial marginal ridge slopes cervically. It's like 45 degrees rather than being perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth or horizontal. The second fun fact is that the transverse ridge is very, very prominent, more prominent than all of the other premolars. Now let's look at the occlusal. So in the other videos, I started off with the grooves because the groove patterns are described as the bow tie or the pruny raisin. For our mandibular first premolar with that very prominent transverse ridge, we're more concerned with our pits and fossas. So we're gonna look at pits first. There are two, a mesial pit and a distal pit, and they're very prominent, giving us almost like a snake eyes appearance. And with each of our pits comes a fossa, a mesial fossa and a distal fossa. And the distal is typically larger than the mesial, still giving us a snake eyes appearance. For the other premolars that we've done so far, the fossa were called triangular fossa because they were shaped like triangles. More often than not, the fossa of the mandibular first premolar are either circular or linear shaped. So that's why it's just mesial fossa and distal fossa, not mesial triangular fossa, not distal triangular fossa, just mesial fossa, distal fossa. Now we'll look at grooves. Central groove honestly might not even be there because of how prominent that transverse ridge is but it could be. The groove that you really should know is the one we saw from the lingual and the mesial, the mesial lingual developmental groove. This is gonna run between the mesial marginal ridge and the mesial lingual cusp ridge. And when you're looking at from the, when, when you're looking at the tooth from the occlusal, right where this groove is crossing from the occlusal to that mesial lingual, there's almost like a notch or a depression in this outline of the crown. This is going to contribute to the distal half of the crown being wider buccal lingually compared to the mesial half of the crown being less wide buccal lingually. The other grooves are not as important, but the American textbooks will name them the distal developmental groove and there might be a mesial developmental groove. Textbooks in other countries sometimes call it the distal buccal triangular groove and the mesial buccal triangular groove and a distal lingual triangular groove. The mandibular first premolar is going to have one root and one canal. And that's it for the mandibular first premolar. Can you possibly guess what our next video is going to be on? 
It's the mandibular second premolar. So I'll see you next time. Till then, go ahead and check out these other videos on dental anatomy.